Hello guys, welcome to Photographics Academy. All right, so today I'll be teaching you how I was able to color grade this image from this to this, just the way you are looking at it, the before and after, just in my Lightroom. And to spice things up, I'm going to show you how I'll quickly use my uh, done for you action pack and get the image touched without even having to do any other thing manually. So let me give you a walkthrough on how I was able to achieve this color grading. So first of all, I was in basic mode. I adjusted the the uh, the temperature a little, adjusted the tint just a little and made some moves around my highlights. If you look at the image, start with the highlights. The highlight makes things to pop out, pop out a little for me and gives it that three dimensionality. Then I reduced the shadows just by minus four, added a little white, uh, quite, quite much anyway, plus 70, 73. Because of the, the look of the whole image, it has a lot of highlights. So I needed those highlights to pop as much as possible. Then I obviously added some texture just to bring out a little bit more of the details in the image. Then the metal shift I did in the image was that I separated the image from the background. If you look at the mask over here, you are going to see the separation here. So all I did was I, was I used just go to create mask. Yeah, you will see the background. You see the background. Let's find it. Okay, so you, yeah, look at it, select background. So immediately I clicked on select background, it separated the image for me from the background. Then I used my hue, saturation, and all that adjustment to make the changes you are looking at right here. So these are the changes I made. I reduced the temperature, tinted it towards the greens because it was obviously very warm. Then I shifted the saturation to go up. I moved the hue just towards the greens a little so i could get this amazing green and one more thing that i did was that i color graded the image using color grading right inside camera raw. so you could see my mid-tone was tint was going towards my blues so this is the image without the mid-tone adjustment so in the middle i added the mid-tone adjustment it gave this let me zoom it so you could see the difference so this is it without the mid-tone adjustment this is it with the mid-tone adjustment then added a little bit in the shadows as well look at it before after before after so i didn't touch the highlight was the best screen looking at the image for me then one more thing i did was i went to my color mixer and made some major changes there so this is the image without the color mixer see the way it's looking quite too bright and all of that so immediately i added the color mixer i brought it down so this is the image without the color mixer so i came and made some little other adjustments using the color mixer so i reduced the saturation of my orange of my orange increase increase that of the yellows increased that of the greens the aquas i don't think is doing anything because there's no part of the image with that color then to my, in my luminous i drop down the orange drop down the red uh drop down the greens a little so it wouldn't be very distracting yeah like that then the same thing to my hues just make one or two adjustments here and there to get the overall general look and that was how we were able to achieve this color grading from this to this with just few clicks in camera raw and having done that let's jump straight into photoshop so we are right here in photoshop look at the image here we are right here in photo the first one is probably crop if i want if i wanted to probably let's see it for cropping i don't think i will be needing the cropping because i'm losing a lot of my image to that so i won't be cropping this one i won't be cropping i think i like it this way so I'll go straight to my action and locate my done for you somewhere here. Look at it over here. So I'm going to click on retouch done for you. I'll zoom on the image to look at the texture. All right. So before I do that, let me quickly fix this. Let me just over here. Okay. So having done that, let me quickly run my done for you. So I'll click on it. So the Gaussian blur panel is going to obviously come up where I will be needing to determine how smooth or how detailed I would want it to be. So let me try something quite high, maybe around eight. Yeah, somewhere around eight, then I'll come back and try something lower. Let's see general overall effect. So I'm going to press OK and wait for it. Nice, that is beautifully done. Oh, this is so nice. Yes, I think I love it at the eight. Yeah. So this is the image before, after, before, after. Look at the dimensions, amazing. 
Okay, so let's do it again before and after, before, after, before, after. So I'm going to take a snapshot of this. Let's go to my history. I'm going to take a snapshot of this. Then I'll delete the effect and do it with a lower number. Per snapshot was taken. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm going to try it using a lower number. So let's do it again. Yeah, so we'll do it down for you. Maybe somewhere around three or four. Half of what we did. Okay, so I want to get extreme smoothness. So I'll do three. I want to get extreme smoothness. I'll press OK. nice that one is done as well so this is before this is after so i also take a snapshot so we'll look at them together and know the one that is better all right so i'll delete this i guess let's look at it so this is the one we did this is the snapshot one the one that gave us quite some details that retained so quite some details in the image i think i love this i love this then this is the one we did with very low uh, number of Gaussian blur. Let's look at the difference. This gives it extra smoothness. I think I prefer this, yeah. Prefer this because it still kept my textures intact and all of that. Okay, so I think we'll be proceeding with the second one. I like the, the overall effect. So after running or done for you, the image is already done. Or just to give it an extra kit, maybe I'm going to add a little torsage and burning to it. Yeah, let's see how that I'll do it 100%, then reduce the opacity. Okay, so check here, check here. The lips area, nice. Maybe the forehead that is necessary. I don't want it there. Don't want it hitting the highlights on the forehead. Yeah, okay, so the eye, eye area. So the arms, obviously, I would like it here. Same thing with this area. Back here, back here. Don't think I want it here, just here. Then probably on the stuff on her neck. Then over her breast area. Just to make things pop. This is too much. Yeah, nice. Okay, right here. Uh, that didn't work. Nice. All right. So this is before and after. Auto the jambon. Or after. So I'm obviously going to drop it down. It's too much. I'll just reduce the opacity, water opacity. And everybody knows as well. Reduce the water opacity. And we are good to go. So this is before. This is after. We are done. We are absolutely done. Probably we are going to brighten it, but just slightly. Yeah. Just make it come out. I think it was looking too dark. So let me show you the overall before and after of the whole image. You see how much we're able to do with more like an automated restoration process. All right, so this is the image when we came into Photoshop. Yeah, so this is the image when we came into Photoshop. This is the image after we touch it. Let me take one more snapshot. So this was the image after when we came into Photoshop. Let me zoom out, yeah. So this is the image when we applied our snapshots. Then when we applied our auto dodge and bond, it got even a better key in the image. Thank you for watching this amazing video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video. Thank you.